Hi, my name is Matt Gibson and I'm the curator of natural history here at the Charleston Museum. Today, we're going to look at one of our most famous paleontological specimens, Pelagornis sandersi. This bird had the widest wingspan of anyone currently known to science and was found right here in Charleston, South Carolina. The fossils of this giant were first discovered from a construction site at the Charleston airport in 1983. Although it was known that this fossil discovery of a giant bird 25 to 28 million years old was an important discovery, it wasn't truly known how important until Dr. Daniel Sepka visited the museum in 2012. Sepka's work, published in 2014, first describes this behemoth of the skies. By comparing the bones of Pelagornis to modern birds, he was able to determine that the wingspan was approximately 6.4 meters or around 21 feet wide. This completely overshadows the wingspan of the largest modern bird, the royal albatross, which itself has a respectable wingspan of 11.5 feet. The average human male only has a wingspan of around 6 feet. Despite casting a large shadow, Pelagornis would have only weighed as much as an average golden retriever. Pelagornis is a genus of birds that falls within the group of pseudodontorns. These birds have projections on their beak that look and function a lot like teeth without being true teeth. Pelagornis would have used these to snap up slippery prey like squid and fish. Another interesting feature of Pelagornis' jaw is its faceted hinge, which worked a lot like a ball and socket joint. This would have allowed for greater flexibility, and it's something that it shares with other modern seabirds. In addition to catching prey on flight, Pelagornis is also hypothesized to have maybe been a nest thief, stealing hatchlings from their nests. Speaking of flight, one of the problems Pelagornis posed was its body size exceeded what scientists thought was the upper limit of animals capable of flight. Quite simply, it was thought with something with wings that wide would not be able to support the muscles needed to flap and lift it into the air. And even if it did, the weight of those muscles would have kept it grounded. It is thought that Pelagornis was able to surpass the barriers that biology and physics had placed before it by utilizing ocean air currents. It would extend its wings and catch air off the ocean waves to create lift and carry itself over great distances while expending very little energy. The modern albatross also migrates the globe using a very similar strategy. It's likely Pelagornis was just as capable. Research in this amazing creature as well as other fossil organisms in the museum's collection, is still ongoing. A full reconstruction of Pelagornis can be seen in the museum's Bunting Natural History Gallery, as well as a portion of the original skeleton. I hope to see you all exploring the Lowcountry's ancient past in our Natural History Gallery very soon. Bye!